Yes. What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. All good, man. All good. So, yeah, how are you guys doing? You know, uh, during this crazy, weird time that we're going through. You know, I hope you guys are cool. You know, um, you know, health is all good. Uh, you know, not the uh, caught up by the C virus. And yeah, man, I just hope you, your family, and everybody is healthy and um, just staying focused. You know, because you've got to stay focused because after all this, you know, we've got over this. You know, a storm is coming. You know, we're heading into a recession. So we've got to keep our mind and our body and our spirit sharp. All right. So, yeah, we're going to do a review of Resident Evil 3. Yeah. So, first of all, let's start off with a spoiler free review. That's how we're going to start this thing. Yeah. Uh, is Resident Evil 3 worth your money? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, marks that I would give the game I would give the game a 8 out of 10 And it kills me to give it an 8 out of 10 But there are some Things that I can't Overlook Right uh, Like they did cut out a big section Of the game Yeah um, In terms of Story beats Yeah That was still in there They didn't cut anything out of the story but in terms of the gameplay, yeah, they cut out a big area that had a significant amount of puzzles, right? So for that, it's a little bit irksome, yeah? And also, they could have emphasised a little bit more on the character interactions. Because I would say... The beginning of the game, yeah, there was some really, really good character interactions. You know, Nikolai um, and Jill, you know, Mikhail and Carlos, um, Jill and Nikolai. Um, some of the, of course, the best interactions were between um, Jill and Carlos, you know. You know, Jill and Nemesis. You know, when they were doing that in story, it was good, right? But I kind of feel that they were trying to focus more on making the game uh, something that you experience for the first time. And you can, you know, enjoy the game. And it will take you, like, quite long to do it. Like, maybe 10 hours. Or 7 hours, 8 hours. And then, after that, you'll play through the game... And you just want to speed run it. Right? That's why I feel that they focused on the game. So for that, they removed a lot of key elements that allow you to enjoy Raccoon City. To enjoy the world. They could have emphasised more on Umbrella. Right? Because after Resident Evil 3, we ain't getting Umbrella. You know, Resident Evil 4... Was about the parasites, right? Resident Evil 5 was about um, the parasites as well, you know, um, and Wesker and them trying to mix uh, the parasites from Resident Evil 4 with the Ouroboros, you know, and then Resident Evil 6 was just like a new generation. So this is the last we're getting of the Umbrella era, you know, they could do, I thought they could have just. Gave us more of Umbrella and seeing more of Raccoon City and the scientists and the corporation of Umbrella. So I feel they missed a massive opportunity in this one, right? You know, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's how I personally feel. Yeah, you may, they could have shown Wesker, you know, because Wesker did have a presence. In this game, when you're reading the notes of the original Resident Evil 2, you would hear things about um, Wesker in the shadows. He was like a submarine or something like that, uh, making observations of um, the events of Jill. Because Jill's events were set before Resident Evil 2. Then there was Resident Evil 2. Jill's story was taking place in in um, during Resident Evil 2. And... The events of Jill took place after Resident Evil 2, 
right? So I just feel that they did miss very important elements of the game that I would have expected from this remake and then redoing everything, right? But other than that, I would say the game was a solid 8 out of 10, right? So yeah, that's all I felt about Resident Evil uh, 3. I mean, yeah, if you want to stick around for the complete review, please be my guest. And we're going to start that in... Three, two, one. We here. All right. So Resident Evil Three, man, I really enjoyed that game. I thought that game was really, really good. You know, um, weapons felt good. You know, it wasn't as scary or as nerve wracking as I recall Resident Evil Three being. Resident Evil Three was an action, more of an action Resident Evil. Yeah, but I remember instances in Resident Evil 3 where I had low life and then there was a save point. Yeah, and then as I'm walking towards it, I'll just hear do, 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 stars. And I'm like, oh my God, no. And then I would like quickly try to get to the save point and I would just make it into the save, uh, save point area. Yeah, and I'll be like, oh, thank God. And I hear, Burr! and then I turn around and the door is smashed. My life is flashing red. I'm in danger. And Nemesis is still like there and stars. And he's, he's like smashed into like my safe area. And I'm like, what the hell? Because in Resident Evil 3, there were some save areas that weren't classified as save areas. They had the save machine, yeah, the typewriter. They had a save uh, item box, but they weren't actually safe areas. Save slash safe areas, yeah. There were like one or two of them in the original game. And this game has got some of them as well, right? Because I was playing in this game and Nemesis actually stunned me because he actually came into a save area, right? And I was like, there's a typewriter, there's an item box, what are you doing in here? Right, so I just ran into the next area, got my grenade and I just like bombed him, right? And then uh, knocked him over. So that kind of like shocked me, right? But in this game... He wasn't a threat, right? And that is a bit of a problem. Yeah, the fact that I I was not nervous about Nemesis at all, right? The only thing I would say about Nemesis is when you play it on the harder difficulties, he hits hard, man. Like, he will take you from 100% life into danger in one hit, right? And that is why the dodge is essential, right? Uh, the only thing I would say about the dodge is it's unstable, right? You do get a feel for it, but if you get hit, you make a mistake and you get hit, you're going to lose 100% life, right? And it can be a little bit frustrating, right? But most of the time, you are basically just dodging to get away from him. Because once you've reached a certain a distance from him, he ain't going to pursue you, right? Because the game is pushing you to keep on going forward. So when you do see Nemesis, the game is literally telling you it's your time to move to the next area in story. And you are going to do that. And when that happens, Nemesis is gone, right? So he wasn't like a constant presence just bearing down on you yeah but when he was there it was good i like i enjoyed the fights when you fought um nemesis it was good it was cool the one thing that i was just i thought was just kind of weird was the way i would expect nemesis to be in this game he wasn't and the way i expected tyrants to be in resident evil 2 he wasn't i expected them to be reversed I expected, like, in Resident Evil 2, Tyrant was always on you. 
He was always on you. He never left you alone when you got to a certain point in the story. Yeah. Um, well, with Leon, anyway. Right? Um, but then when you had in Resident Evil 3, Nemesis would only show up when you're about to reach a brand new area that you can't go back. Right, because you'd get to a certain point and it will say, um, you're going to stop you now you're going to go to the hospital. And once you go to the hospital, you can't go back to Raccoon City. Right? So it was like little things like that, right, that I just I just didn't understand. Right. I expected Nemesis to be on me more, right? And also the world of Raccoon City was, it was incredible. What they gave you was outstanding. It was just the neon lights, the, the vibrancy, the plazas, the restaurants, the, uh, the gun shops, the, um, just everything. The hotels, there was so much, the toy stores. You know the supermarkets. There was you could tell the um, environments told a story of Raccoon City, right? And I particularly liked the beginning when you started off, and Jill was in her apartment. I thought that was amazing, and then she had like a dream that she'll turn it into a a zombie. It was unbelievable, you know. And then and Brad calls you, and it says. You, I, I can't explain, but you've got to get out now. The tyrant just burst through your door, right? And the wall, sorry, right? And then it's just, it's it's on, yeah? From that moment, from that moment there, yeah? It started off amazing, and then you just had to escape from uh, Nemesis, and then you make it, and then you find Brad, and then you see the helicopters, and there's fire everywhere, and then you're seeing the whole of Raccoon City, and then you're seeing survivors running, and you're like, whoa, this is the game that I'm playing. This is the Raccoon City that I've dreamt about, right? That's there for like about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if even that. And then afterwards, the city is it's still amazing, but the first... 50 to an hour of the game is not how the game progresses, right? You know, it, the game completely changes. Like, I would say, after the whole bit where you get a cutscene with Carlos, Mikhail, and Jill, where basically um, Carlos saves Jill from Nemesis, they go to meet the captain, Mikhail, they say they're trying to get the trade moving. And then Jill goes to uh, basically the um, rail, you know, the um, network rail area to try to get the electricity running for the trains, right? Up to, when it gets to that point, the game just changes. The pace completely changes, right? And it just feels like a different game. But it's still a good game. But the first bit, but all the, everything that happened until that cutscene was just unbelievable it was fantastic it just gave you a sense of i am in resident evil 3 and then basically from there the game didn't keep up that same momentum that same bar that it set it just didn't maintain it but the game is still amazing it's still a really really good game yeah uh and i remember resident evil 3 there was an area Right, where you would it was almost like a mansion, yeah, like a mansion area. Um and I remember there was a bit where you were on a, a like um it was almost like a giant it was like a giant clock and then there was a bit where Nemesis uh you had to do like a puzzle or something. Right? And then when you went... And then when you came from the... Um, finishing the puzzle... Nemesis would come out from the door. And then it would tell you... It would give you like a... A... Decision you had to make. Like I think you had to either... Shine a light to blind him... And then you could shoot him up or, uh, or run. Or you... If you've done the puzzle correctly... 
then you could electrocute him. You could, or, you, or I think it was just there automatically. You pulled the cord and you threw it into the water and it would electrocute him. And then he would drop like um, parts because um, Nemesis would drop parts and he could make a gun called the Desert Eagle. I think it was a Desert Eagle, like a really cool, amazing gun. Yeah, but you had to keep on killing him on every encounter, which I could do easily in Resident Evil 3 because I was godlike in that game right um so yeah but that was that area wasn't there and i was i was i remember that area it was almost like a mansion but i ain't played that game in i would say over 20 years right i feel like it's over 20 years i haven't played that game yeah so maybe my mind is playing tricks in but i do feel like there was a mansion and there was like underneath it or something there was like a hospital area because the hospital was in this game. The hospital was in the original. But they cut the layer of the mansion out of it. And that was a massive error because there was a lot of puzzles. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, they used Resident Evil 2 area a little bit. But not much. They only used it I think with... Uh, but you have to. Because Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 take place... At the same place, at the same time, you know, uh, in Raccoon City, the police department, Jill is stars in um, RPD. Leon is starting, his was on his first day in RPD. Claire was coming to see her brother in Raccoon City's at RPD. So the fact that they only use like maybe two, three, maybe four, if even that, areas from Resident Evil 2, right? So, but they, they did it well, you know. They I don't feel like they reused the areas because you have to use the same similar area because it's the same area within the story, right? So I didn't have a problem with that because... 90% of the game was new areas, right? So for me personally, I thought the game was really good and it was... I mean, I mean, I don't... I want to say it wasn't... I'm not going to say it was long enough, right? But it was a decent length, yeah? Because what you've got to remember um, when you're compared to Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 2 was two stories. It was Leon's story and it was Claire's story. Yeah, it was essentially two games, you know, two um, character stories, games, in one game. Jill had just her one story, you know. And the sections you played with Carlos was really good. The enemies were different, the way you had to use um, Carlos was different. And he was a cool character, I actually liked Carlos, I was, I was kind of dreading using him. But after I got used to him, I was like, yo, this guy's cool, man. They give you enough um, weapons. It's a bit tricky, though. Um, I did find uh, Carlos um, a little bit harder when you played him in, like, the harder difficulty, right? Uh, because when you play it in normal, I mean, let's be honest, if you, no one ever really plays it in normal or easy, that's not for... Um, you know, good players or decent players or people that care about the game. Normal is just a means to an end. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It's only when you play the game in like the harder difficulties. That's when the game actually truly comes alive. And that's what I'm judging the game on. I'm judging the game based on the harder difficulties. I don't care about normal. Because they're always going to be a walk in the park. They're always going to be easy to, to just rush through. It doesn't mean anything. Right. So, uh, but when I got to used to playing Carlos, um, basically, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's just that the hunters were a little bit of a pain. They were a little bit of a pain, like tricky to deal with, right? Because they could like one, they could just one hit kill you, right? Uh, and the way you had to play Carlos, he didn't have evasion. He had like a body check, you know, and you wanted to do it at proper timing or else they will slash you and kill you. Right, so I did enjoy the difference in gameplay. Right, um, so it was good. It was the game was good. Um, I would definitely recommend that game. Right, that you go play that game. Um, would I say that they could one day, maybe, PS Five comes out, 
they could do like a PS5, Xbox Series X version and bundle them all together, right? Because I love it. I'm For me, this is my catalogue of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. I'm going to play those games together. Like When I do decide to play Resident Evil 2 again, I'm playing Resident Evil 2, Claire, Leon, and then I'm playing Resident Evil 3. Because this is the this is the trilogy that I've wanted to play their three sagas in this godlike story in one go. So I love it. For me, no problem. I bought the Clips edition, right? I'm happy with it. I've got no regrets about it. I've enjoyed the game, right? I enjoy the lore of Resident Evil 3. As I said in my spoiler-free review, the only problem I have with the Resident Evil 3, just in general, was the fact that they could have they could have emphasised more on Umbrella, you know? I mean, the information that you find about the researchers that work for Umbrella, right? Um, the information you found out about officers and soldiers and, you know, the... Um, the umbrella countermeasure services, uh, the operatives in that, right? I like the notes, the diaries, the memoirs, the survivors. I loved all that stuff. I wish you would have seen more survivors in that game. Like when you saw uh, the interaction between Jill and Kendo, that interaction was so sick. I thought that was an awesome interaction, but they didn't put enough of it. They didn't put enough interactions in that world, after a certain point, the world was still amazing, but it, f it didn't feel alive enough compared to the beginning. Because you set the game up in the very beginning, the first 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 minutes. No, not 50 minutes. About 20 to, 20 to 30 minutes of the game, they set that up as just some big... Resident Evil game and it, it wasn't it was the world they I feel like they could have shown us more of Raccoon City that's how I feel right there could have been more puzzles you know they could have they could have emphasized more on the story and more character interactions because in the beginning there was quite a lot of character interactions and cutscenes and that was absolutely amazing that's what I loved about the demo the demo gave me uh, a false uh notion yeah that the game was going to have a lot of character interactions and the cutscenes of that caliber right but the game wasn't but it did have enough it did have enough cutscenes and sorry like jill's character in this game was good she seemed like she was really she was sassy i liked her personality i liked her character the facial expressions of that character were Next level. If it wasn't for Resident Evil, um, sorry, for Final Fantasy um, 7, I would say that game is the, I would say it was the, the best in terms of the subtle character, facial animations and expressions. Jill was absolutely incredible as a character. She is a completely different character to the character that I've known for over 20 years. It's not even the same Jill Valentine, right? But I do like her. I do like the way she carries on. I do like her personality, her fire. She's very, very fiery, that character. She don't have, an, have none of it, right? Like, the, there was the bit where uh, Nemesis was coming after them. And she could have run away to safety. But she was like, nah, Nemesis is coming after me. And she rolled out to go take on Nemesis. And for me, that's what Resident Evil was. Resident Evil 3 was, first and foremost, Jill versus Nemesis. So when I play Resident Evil 3, I'm always fighting Nemesis. I make a save, yeah, in that game, and I just fight Nemesis. That's what I do. I stockpile ammunition, yeah, and when it's time for me and him to fight, I just go in on him. You know, just fighting him, shooting him, dodging him, doing my quick, my um, slow motion shots, waiting for him to get up, shooting him, you know, knock him down, sitting there. I chill out, wait for him to get up and we go and we go and we go like 10 rounds. That's how I played that game. 
right? I love it. I love fighting Nemesis, yeah? Uh, so for me, I enjoy the game, yeah, a lot. But as I said, there were some things that were just... Oh, I feel like they, they missed a beat, you know? With the character interactions, with not enough character interactions, not enough story, not enough um, emphasising with story on the scientists and the world, you know, of Umbrella, you know, um, and the conspiracies and just making the world have more characters, you know, like more survivors, you know, I feel like they could emphasise it, made it longer and, you know, very, very bad move. To cut out the um that mansion area, you know, like that was that was a that's a big mistake, you know. I didn't like that at all. I wasn't happy with, I wasn't happy about that, right? Uh, but the game was it was still enough. It was still enough of a game. But if they are, because I have heard rumors that they're making Resident Evil uh, Four. If they do, they cannot cut anything. Make the game. You can add more. You can change a little bit of things. But you cannot cut anything. Nothing. Nothing must be cut. It must be Resident Evil 4 with more story and just more everything. Nothing less. That's the thing about this Resident Evil 3. I do feel like it was a little bit less. The best thing about this game was the updated graphics. The updated graphics and just the feeling and I loved the music. The music, the game felt like some type of um, intense psychological um, horror action thrilling 90s movie, right? That's how this movie felt. That's how this, I said movie. That's how this game felt, right? I loved the music. I loved the world. I loved the atmosphere. But as I said, what I've said for the last couple of minutes, what I felt that they missed a beat, right? But other than that, good game, man. Uh, I'll give the game a solid 8 out of 10, right? And me saying 8 out of 10 is literally because I'm a purist. I played the original Resident Evil 3, and I loved me Resident Evil 3. So, from a remake, I mean, I played Resident Evil Final Fantasy 7. When I look at that remake, that's a re that Resident Evil uh, Final Fantasy 7, that's not even a remake. That should have been, that is a brand new thing of Final Fantasy 7, which blows the original, which I, I can't believe I'm saying it, but it blows the original Final Fantasy 7 out of the water. <laughs> clean right this resident evil 3 does not blow the original out the water right uh in terms of the structure of the game the original resident evil 3 is better much better in terms of the structure in terms of the story um telling and the graphics and the way the world looks of course it's going to be this game of course you know, and I do like when you complete this game, you know, you get like a shop where you can buy stuff like um, new outfits, you can buy new weapons, you can buy like the unlimited infinite ammo weapons, you can buy like new sword, like new knives and just new stuff. There's new additional options that you can buy by completing um, challenges and getting achievements in the game. Trophies, right? So... There was a lot of things that I do like in that game, right? I'd still recommend you buy that game. I would say it's worth your money. Definitely worth your time, right? But if they're going to make a Resident Evil uh, 4, as I said, you cannot repeat these mistakes again, right? Uh, they can't do it. So, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Let me, I really want to know what you think about this Resident Evil 3. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What didn't you like? What did you like? What do you think they could have done better? What could they change? Yeah, because as I told you, I told you um, how I felt about the game. How I felt about Nemesis as a character, you know. Um, or did I say how I felt about Nemesis as a character? I felt that, yeah, I did. Nemesis was, let's say, he was an interesting character, but he just wasn't the Nemesis. The, um, the way his role was in the game, I expected to see him more but when you did fight against him it was a good fight because i'd make it a good fight because i'll save and i just me and him just fight me and him will fight right until i've got no ammo left so yeah
Warriors, once again, thank you. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next one. Laters.